It's been six months since the divorce. Six months since I packed up my life and moved to the suburbs. The house I bought is old, with creaky floors and drafty windows, but it's very cheap and airy, located at the outer edge of town. At least that's what I tell myself as I settle into my new, solitary existence. Today, the rain falls in relentless sheets, hammering against the roof and windows. The storm is fierce, a perfect companion for my restless thoughts. I sit in the dimly lit living room, nursing a glass of whiskey, and listen to the symphony of water and wind. The house seems to groan with the weight of the past, as if it remembers the lives that once filled its rooms. It's early afternoon when the first unusual sound pierces the steady rhythm of the rain. A thud, followed by a faint scratching noise like nails on a chalkboard. I was startled, my heart pounding in my chest. The sound is coming from the basement. I've always hated basements, dark, damp, and full of shadows. I grab the flashlight from the kitchen drawer and head down the narrow staircase. The beam of light cuts through the darkness, revealing nothing but old furniture and cobwebs. I reach the bottom step and shine the light around. The sound stops abruptly, leaving only the echo of the storm. I tell myself it's just the house settling, an old building protesting the weather, and head back upstairs. Evening approaches and the rain intensifies, along with my sense of unease. I slowly lost consciousness, the whiskey dulling my senses but not enough to drown out the nagging feeling that something is wrong. Around 8 p.m., I hear it again. The same scratching, but this time, it's louder, more insistent. I get up from the couch and tiptoe to the basement door. The sound is more distinct now, almost as if it's trying to communicate. With a deep breath, I fling open the door and shine the flashlight down. To my horror, I see muddy footprints leading up the stairs, stopping just a few steps from where I stand. Panic sets in. I rush to the front door, checking the locks. Everything is secure. I search the house, room by room, but find nothing out of place. The only sign of an intruder was a trail of mud in the basement. I decided to stay up until morning, too scared to sleep. As the hours pass, the rain finally lets up a bit. I feel a slight sense of relief as I see the clock strike 11 p.m. Maybe it was all just my imagination, fueled by the storm and my overactive mind. I head to the basement one last time to clean up the mess. But as I scrub the floor, I notice something odd. The footprints lead to a section of the wall that looks slightly different from the rest. Curiosity overcoming fear, I went to examine the wall. It is a hidden door, cleverly camouflaged so that the outside cannot see it. My heart races as I find the latch and pull it open. Behind the door is a small, dusty room filled with old furniture and boxes. The air is musty, the light dim. But what catches my attention is a large, ornate mirror leaning against the wall. I step closer, the flashlight beam dancing off the glass. As I gaze into the mirror, a chill runs down my spine. The reflection shows the room as it is, but there's something wrong. In the corner of the mirror's image, a shadowy figure stands watching me. I whip around, but the room is empty. When I look back at the mirror, the figure's gone. The atmosphere in the house has changed. The once creaks and groans now seem sinister. I hear whispers in the night feel cold drafts even when the windows are shut. The mirror in the hidden room haunts my thoughts. Every time I gather the courage to look into it, I see fleeting glimpses of the shadowy figure. I try to rationalize it, stress, isolation, the effects of the divorce. I found a few photos of the previous owner, who appeared in the missing person's newspaper last month. He was an eccentric, recluse, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Neighbors said he went mad. Others believe he was taken by something inhuman. The power goes out, plunging the house into darkness. The only sound is the relentless pounding of the rain. The last thing I hear is a whisper, 
soft and sinister, echoing through the room. When the neighbors find the house abandoned the next day, they assume I left in a hurry, unable to cope with the solitude. They never notice the hidden room in the basement or the mirror with its dark secret. As the house stands empty, waiting for its next occupant, the storm clouds gather once more and the rain begins to fall. I had always loved the rain. Its soothing sound usually provides a sense of calm. But that night, it felt different. It was one of those nights when the rain fell relentlessly, a constant drumming against the windows. The house became strangely empty when my parents went on a business trip on the weekend, and I had to stay home to look after the house. And while I had always been comfortable being home alone at 18, the loneliness now seems to make me feel suffocated. I settled into the living room, the soft glow of the lamp casting long, eerie shadows on the walls. The rain seemed louder, each droplet sounding like a tiny hammer against the window pane. I tried to soothe myself with a book, but the words blurred as my mind wandered. The storm outside seemed to be growing fiercer, the wind howling through the trees like a lost soul. I decided to make some tea, hoping the warm drink would settle my nerves. I got up and headed to the kitchen. As I walked, I noticed a strange stillness in the house, an unnatural quiet that set my nerves on edge. I had just filled the kettle when I heard it, a faint whisper, barely audible over the rain. I stopped, straining to listen, but the only sound was the wind. Shaking my head, I told myself it was just my imagination. But as I poured hot water into my cup, the whispering started again, clearer this time. You are not alone. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I glanced around the kitchen, but there was nothing there. The sound seemed to come from the hallway. Slowly, I crept toward the source. Every creak of the floorboards amplified in the silence. The whispering continued, growing louder with each step. Who are you? I called out, my voice trembling. There was no response, just the relentless whispering. I reached the end of the hallway, where the shadows seemed darker and more menacing. I flicked on the light, but it only made the shadows dance more wildly. The whispering stopped abruptly, replaced by a chilling silence. I stood there, trying to steady my breathing. I felt a cold draft brush past me, making the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Suddenly, the light bulb flickered and went out, plunging me into darkness. Panic surged through me as I fumbled for my phone, using a flashlight to guide me back to the living room. The rain hammered against the windows, as if trying to break in. I called Bella, my best friend, hoping her voice would calm me down. As I dialed, I heard footsteps behind me. I whipped around but the hallway was empty. The phone rang, but no one picked up. I left a shaky voicemail, begging her to call me back. I sat down on the chair, hugging the pillow tightly over my head. The whispering continued, louder than ever. Get out. My breath caught in my throat. I knew I had to leave, but my legs felt like lead. Summoning every ounce of courage, I ran to the front door, flinging it open. The cold rain soaked me instantly, but I didn't care. I sprinted to my car, my hands shaking as I fumbled with the keys. The road seemed to stretch endlessly before my eyes, darkness engulfing me from all sides. Rain lashed against the windshield, the wipers struggling to keep up. I kept glancing in the rearview mirror, hoping I wouldn't see anyone behind me. Finally arrived, I burst into tears, the adrenaline crashing down. My friend opened the door her face a mask of concern. She let me in, wrapping a blanket around my shoulders and making me a hot drink. I told her what had just happened, but she looked skeptical, trying to hide her disbelief. After that night, I refused to stay home alone. My parents thought the events that night were just my imagination, and even my friends seemed to think I had just spooked myself. But I knew what I had heard, what I had felt. The house had changed that night. Familiar things and cozy corners, 
transformed into something alien and menacing. I moved into a small, rickety house on Crescent Street at the beginning of my second year of college. The rent is unbelievably cheap, completely suitable for my student budget. This place might have once been a cozy house. The waterproof paint was peeling off the walls. The walnut floors groaned with every step, and the windows rattled, even when the wind was still. Despite these shortcomings, I still feel the house has a special appeal. It was very cheap, and in the backyard, there was a big oak tree. The first few days were spent classes, part-time work, and settling into my new home. But everything changed when a storm hit one evening. It was Thursday of my second week here, and the sky darkened quickly in the late afternoon. When I returned from school, the rain was pouring down. Thunder rumbled in the distance. I made myself a cup of tea and started studying. The power supply flickered a few times as thunder sounded. The storm intensified. I heard strange noises coming from the attic. I dismissed it thinking it was the sound of the wind, or the sound of an old house enduring a hurricane. But the noises became louder and clearer. They sounded like scratching sounds, followed by a faint, almost imperceptible growl. My curiosity was aroused. I grabbed my flashlight and headed up the narrow stairs to the attic. The door creaked open, and I shined the light around the cluttered space. Dusty boxes, old furniture, and forgotten items cast eerie shadows on the walls. I moved the beam of light across the room. Something caught my eye. A small, tattered, stuffed animal lying in the corner. It was a rabbit, its fur matted and one eye missing. I felt a shiver run down my spine as I picked it up. The moment I touched it, the scratching noises stopped abruptly. I brought the rabbit downstairs, intending to throw it away the next day. But when I placed it on the kitchen table, a strange feeling overwhelmed me. Both fear and curiosity. There was a feeling that the rabbit was watching me, even with its single eye. That night, a storm arose, and the house was colder than usual. I tried to sleep tossing and turning as the wind howled outside. At some point, I had just fallen asleep when a loud clap of thunder startled me awake. My heart pounding, I sat up and listened. At this time, the house was unusually quiet, with only the sound of rain falling. I turned on the nightlight and was stunned. The stuffed rabbit is sitting on the floor next to my bed. I clearly remember leaving it in the kitchen. How did it get here? I told myself I probably moved it and forgot. But deep down, I know that's not the case. I picked up the rabbit and observed it closely. Just a normal stuffed animal. I don't like its remaining eye. Pitch black, lifeless, and deep inside. I wondered who could create eyes like this. I took it back to the kitchen, put it in a drawer, and locked it. As I turned away to go back into the room, I heard a faint whisper, almost like a child's voice, saying, Don't leave me. The sound of rain rushing outside the window, I thought to myself, is someone calling me right now? I looked out the window. There was no one outside, only darkness and rain covering everything. Maybe because I was too tired from work today, I heard hallucinations. The sound of rain rushing outside the window, I thought to myself, is someone calling me right now? I looked out the window. There was no one outside, only darkness and rain covering everything. Maybe because I was too tired from work today, I heard hallucinations. I went back to my room and lay down on the bed, pulled a pillow over my head. The rain had already dropped and cracked outside the window like a soft lullaby. Feeling like someone was watching, I turned on the nightlight and was stunned. The stuffed rabbit is sitting on the floor next to my bed. I clearly remember leaving it in the kitchen and locking it. I found it in different rooms, always watching, always present. The air in the house becomes heavier. The rain got heavier. I heard the call again in the attic. But this time I felt normal and not afraid at all. I climbed up again, under the phone light reflecting dim shadows. 
I didn't know when. The rabbit had been up here, sitting on a dusty book. Inside is a little girl's diary. Emily Carter is a lonely eight-year-old girl whose only solace in her gloomy home is her beloved stuffed bunny. One stormy night, her parents argue fiercely, leading to a tragic fire. Emily, scared and confused, hides in the attic clutching Mr. Whiskers, where she finally perishes. Bound by fear and loneliness in those final moments, her soul clung to Mr. Whiskers, making the rabbit not want to be alone, seeking the companionship and comfort that Emily once provided. After reading a few pages, my eyes suddenly became heavy. The rain pattering in the attic made my ears ring. There was a loud clap of thunder. I was startled and opened my eyes to look around. I was still lying on the bed. The stuffed rabbit did not appear on the floor. I have tinnitus and can still hear the calls echoing outside. I turned on the light and rushed out to the kitchen, to the rabbit. Now I know what I need to do to be able to sleep through this stormy night.